Hello and welcome to Deaf Bible Study tonight. It's exciting to be back with you. I'm sorry for how long it's been uh, since I've been with you. Uh, we have been busy traveling with our different meetings and so we're excited to be back tonight. And uh, what are we going to be talking about? I know I had told you before we were going to begin a study in the book of First Peter. And we, we will do that. It's going to be in the future. For right now, I'd like to do a quick nine-week study of the different names of God. I've asked the question, what is in a name? What is the importance of a name? Well, you know, all through the Bible, there are different names that are given to God to help us to understand who He is better, for us to see Him clearer. And we're going to be studying those for the next nine weeks together, and then we will, be, we will begin to study First Peter. But let's pray. Why? We always need the Lord's help in studying the Word of God. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for the opportunity we have to study the Bible. This book is amazing, and we're thankful for how you show us yourself through this book. We many times hurry quickly through reading, and we miss some important things, and we want to just pause and study your names here. And we pray that you will help us be faithful to learn all that we can so we will honor you, respect you, and serve you better in the future. We ask you would lead our hearts into the truths of the Bible tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, spend some time with you. I have found that really the deeper I study the Word of God, the sweeter the truths that are here become to me. I know that God knows us. He knows that we need His help to be able even to understand who He is. And so we're going to begin this study. It's interesting, my, my family and I, we agree together to pray on the same topic Monday through Friday. And we have given each, each day, we give a different topic and we, as a family, we pray for that topic. Uh, for example, we pray for America, for our nation. We pray for our churches. By the way, all of us go to different, different churches, but we pray for our churches and churches around the world. We pray for our family. And we pray for friends. And we pray last, we pray for health, for people who are struggling with health challenges. Um, it's interesting, we have been praying that way for almost one year now as, as a family together. Well, I began to be curious about the names of God. And so I, it, it was interesting to me, as I was studying the names of God and thinking about our prayer order, those themes that we pray, I found the names of God fit each day, and I'll explain them to you as we go through. But I want to challenge you to think about these different names for God. So I'm going to show you how we as a family, very quickly, uh, we pray for America. And I think about the name, and by the way, they all start with the word Jehovah. You can see that here. And then there's another word. That word Jehovah means the only true God. And then the word behind it is an explanation of a, of a characteristic or, or part of the personality of God. And here you see the word Nisi. And that means the Lord, our banner. We'll talk about that later. And we as Americans, we salute the flag, and it's the same here. On the day, the, the day we pray for the church, I chose the word Jehovah Rohi. And that is what we see in Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is our shepherd. That's the title. And 
<coughs> then on the day that we pray for our family, it's kind of a strange name here, uh, Jehovah Midkadesh. And that means the Lord who sanctifies or makes holy. And then as we pray for our friends, I chose the, the word, the title Jehovah Jireh. And that, is, that means the Lord who provides or meets the needs. And I pray for our friends that God will meet their needs. They're different, different, different ones. And then the last day on Friday, or we typically we pray for the health of people that we know. And we use the name Jehovah uh, Rofi. And that means the Lord who heals. There's just five. Really, we're going to cover more. We're going to cover nine. This is just five. And so I was thinking about that. You know, we pray in Jesus' name. Why? Tradition? Is that why? No. Uh, it might become tradition to us, but it should, should not be tradition. It should be that we pray in Jesus' name. Why? Because we have found that a name and a reputation are the same. They're connected. We have a Savior. You know, some people think, oh, I pray in Jesus' name. He must give me anything I ask for. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not in the Bible. We pray in Jesus' name, meaning we want to pray in accordance with His will, His desires, His plans. And so we, we end our prayer saying, God, we want Jesus to be in charge. We want Jesus to have the top priority even in our prayer life. We are dependent on Jesus Christ to take our prayers to our Heavenly Father. And so we think about the names. What is in a name? We ask that question. And I want you to think about when you pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to put something up and I'm going to pause. I'm going to let you read it. It says this, praying in Jesus' name is not about getting God to do our will. It's about getting our hearts prepared to do His will. Isn't that a wonderful thought? We pray in Jesus' name because we want our hearts to be connected with God's heart together, and we pray for His will, not ours. So the question that we're going to ask and answer every week is, what is in a name? Is a name really important? I thought about putting up here different, different names that you would think about and uh, you know, names, if I put up here, you would know immediately you would recognize the name and it would explain to us names are important. So I want to show you, I'm just going to show you a list of the nine names. I will not cover them all tonight, just one. The last one I show you, we will talk about tonight. But let me show you these names. And by the way, uh, if you're interested, you can contact me. I will email you these list of names, all nine, and you can have them. They're all from the Bible. The first one is Jehovah Jireh. You can see it here. It is the Lord who provides. The second name is Jehovah Rapha. And that means the Lord who heals. By the way, not only physical. In many ways, we'll talk about that. The third name is Jehovah Nisi, and this is the Lord, our banner, our banner. Oh, that's an exciting one, too. I'd like to teach them all tonight, but I cannot. Uh, the fifth one is Jehovah Shama, and that is the Lord is always present. Uh, it also, we could say the Lord will never leave. He is always here. What a wonderful title. Uh, the next one is Jehovah Shalom. You may have heard that word before, and it means the Lord is our peace. 
Uh, the next one is Jehovah Ro Rofi. We talked about that already. That is the Lord is our shepherd. And then the eighth one is Jehovah Sidkenu. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it means the Lord, our righteousness. I'm sorry, that was number seven. Uh, number eight is Jehovah. Whoops, let me push that. Jehovah Mekadesh. That is the Lord who sets apart or makes holy. And tonight we're going to begin with the study of the last one I'll give you tonight. That is the Lord Sabaoth. And it means the Lord of hosts. I'm going to explain it to you. We would, we would sign maybe King of Kings. The Lord of hosts. I want to explain that to you and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Really, this is a military word, Sabaoth. It talks about a large group of soldiers. It can also be talking about angels. It can be used about the stars that are all over the sky. This means the Lord of everything, the King of Kings. That's our God. Amen. Woo! I'm getting excited already. The first night. Wow. So we see this title is important in to the beginning. We're starting here because we want to talk about this God who is above and in charge of everything. That's our God. So I want you to see tonight, if you have your Bible with you, open your Bible to the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. And here we find a story. By the way, these titles are connected with stories you will know in your Bible. And so uh, tonight I want you to see this story. Samuel, we know, I, I signed, signed in for him as Samuel. He was the first of the prophets. Samuel, or he was one of the first prophets, I should say. Samuel became a very important person in the history of Israel. Uh, he chose, God used him, Samuel, to choose the first two kings. And uh, he was an important person. But he didn't start as an important person. He started as a baby. So we're going to go all the way back there. And I want you to see the story. There was a man. His name was Elkanah. And he had two wives. Two wives. I don't want to talk about two wives. One wife is enough. Amen? Oh, that's what God wants us today. But he had two wives. One of his wives had given birth to children. The other had not had any children given birth to no children. She, her, her womb had been empty, never had a child inside of her. Her name was Hannah. But the Bible tells us in verse 3 of chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 3, this man, Elkanah, went out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts. That's our title the Jehovah Sabaoth. He went to worship the Lord in Shiloh. And we know the story. His wife, Hannah, went with. His other wife, with her children, went with. When they arrived there in Shiloh, they met the priest, Eli. And they, uh, they were there to worship the Lord. The Jehovah Sabaoth. Sabaoth, that's the title. We see it here, the Lord of hosts. That's our, our title for today. And, and uh, while they were overdoing something, Hannah got on her knees in the temple and she began to pray. And she was so deeply, deeply hurt because she, she had not had children. She had not given birth to children. And she thought of herself, I am worthless. 
I need God to give me a child. And she was praying and she was not speaking using voice, but her lips were moving. And Eli, the priest, saw Hannah and thought she was drunk. And he came to scold her. And Eli said, you should not be drinking in the middle of the day. She said, I'm not drinking. I'm, I'm sorrowful. I'm filled with sorrow. Why? Because I have no children. And I'm praying and I'm begging God to give me a child. Well, you know the rest of the story. As you go a little further in, in chapter 1, the Bible says that Hannah made a promise to God. And she says in verse 11, drop down to verse 11, you'll see our title, our name again in verse 11. And she vowed a vow. She made a promise. And she said, O Lord of hosts, O Jehovah Sabaoth, God who is controlling all the stars, the angels, all the people, you, the top King of all kings, Lord Sabaoth, she said to him, If you will indeed look on the afflictions of thine handmaid, me, Hannah, if you would look on me, she said, and remember me and not forget me, she said, but I will give unto thee, thine, if you give to thine handmaid, me, a man child, then I will give that child unto the Lord. Whew! What an amazing promise. <clears throat> but she recognizes he is the Lord of all lords. He is the king above all kings. One of the things that I want to teach you as we go through this study for the next, the next nine weeks I want to teach you that what we see in the name of God reveals a weakness in us. Hannah understood this fully. She knelt before God and she begged God. Why? She had tried everything, I'm sure, to have a child. She had tried to keep her physical health good and, 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 and be sure that her husband's health was good and, and cook good food and feed him and herself. And all these things, but nothing had helped. She understood, I am limited. I cannot create a child within me. Uh, I need the help of the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Lord of Hosts. I need Jehovah Sabaoth. I need him. And so she begged God. And we know the story. She made a promise to God, if you would give me a man child, you can see it here, I will give him back to you. And of course, you know what happened. God answered her prayer. Only God can place, now pay attention to me, there's a lot of discussion today about who's, who's responsible for, for a baby inside a mother. I can tell you who's responsible for every baby inside every mother, God. God, the Lord Sabaoth, he is responsible to place a child inside of a mother. And God decided he would do that. So he allowed Elkanah and Hannah to have a son. And God gave them Samuel. By the way, I will tell you, this, this title, this name for God is in your Bible Many, many places, 260 different times that name appears in our Bible. This is one of the most popular names for God in the Bible. And uh, let me show you another place that we might see it. Turn in your, in your Bible's same Old Testament book of 1 Samuel. Turn to chapter 17 with me. Chapter 17. I want you to see here... Uh, a very, very familiar story. You probably have read this story and heard it preached many, many times before. But here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, we find a boy, a teenage boy, 
and we find a a giant. The boy's name, what? Right, David. The giant's name, what? Goliath, right. And I want you to see, because this title appears, remember, remember I told you it's in the Bible 260 times. Here is one. David is facing Goliath. And Goliath is proud and he worships idols. And David had told him, you have gone against my God. And, and he, looked at, he looked at Goliath. Goliath said, why did you send me this boy? You think I'm a dog? And David said to him, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in what? In the name of the Lord of hosts. I come to you in the name Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. That's the name I bring with me. You have the name Goliath. That's all. You are weak. I have all of the power of God of heaven with me. And David was not afraid. And he ran. We know the story. He ran to meet Goliath. Why? He was sure God was going to kill Goliath. And if you see that picture, he just had his sling and a stone and he threw it and it hit Goliath and God killed Goliath. You know, you and I are going to face tough situations. We met Hannah. She had a tough situation. She wanted a child so bad and she could not, she had not had a baby born from her. And so what did she do? She probably went to doc doctors, can you help? And she tried medicine and she tried the right food and she tried exercise and she tried everything and nothing worked. And Hannah said, Jehovah Sabaoth, you are the Lord of everything. I'm going to ask you for help. And God gave Hannah a child. David finds himself on the top of the hill. Down in the valley is Goliath, and he's screaming out. Forty days he has challenged the, the armies of Israel, and nobody has gone down. And David says, who's going to face him? And everybody's weak. Oh, they're so nervous and afraid. And David said, Lord, Jehovah Sabaoth, I need you. I'm going to go down there, Lord, but I don't want to go alone myself. I need you to come with me. And God went with David. And God came down and placed inside Hannah a baby. What am I saying? You might not need a baby. You maybe don't need to fight a giant. But I promise you that you and I have challenges that are bigger than we are. And we are not strong enough to defeat the enemies that face us today. Amen. We need the Lord of hosts. We need the Lord Sabaoth. Sabaoth. We need him. We need the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords. We need the God of heaven to come with his army and help us today. <clears throat> so I want to encourage you. This first name, remember, I said each of the names that we're going to view, and today we're looking at this one. Every name of God reveals his strength and our weakness. God knows that you and I are never going to be able to defeat all the enemies that come to us. We need Him. <clears throat> the sooner you and I understand we need Him, the sooner we're going to have victory. And I want to encourage you today, 
This is, we have, by the way, this same God, <coughs> excuse me, this same God, Jehovah Sabaoth, is still alive and well in heaven. And he's waiting to help you <coughs> and to help me today. We have big problems that face us. We need to surrender to him. <coughs> the same as Hannah surrendered her body and her future son. By the way, what a beautiful picture. As soon as her son, her firstborn son was born and able to live without his mother, <coughs> she took him to the temple and gave Samuel to the Lord. What a beautiful picture. David fully trusted God. He did not use Saul's armor and his sword. He, tr he trusted God in heaven, and God won for him. So I want to say to you, the next time you are facing a huge problem, remember this name. Remember, your God is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. There is no enemy God cannot defeat. I think of a few Bible verses that really touch my heart. One is in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, Greater is He that is in us than He, the devil, that is in the world. And be encouraged tonight. God is better than our enemies. It's interesting to me, the last book in the Old Testament also has this title. <clears throat> and it says in Malachi, I didn't put it up here, I'm sorry. In the Old Testament, the last book of your Bible, Malachi, Ma Malachi, in chapter 4, it's almost the last verse. Verses 2 and 3, it says this. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings and shall go forth and grow up as calves of the, of the, stall, of the stall. Verse 3, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be as ashes under the soles of your feet in that day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Sabaoth. I want to say to you today, you and I need to remember, God knows this name is important for us. He put it in the Bible 260 times. He put it here in the last chapter of the Old Testament. Why? Because you and I need to know that. Now think about that. Those verses in Malachi chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 were some of the last verses that were given before 400 years of silence from God. Between the Old Testament end of Malachi and the beginning of Matthew, the New Testament, there is 400 years where God was silent. And one of the last things God said is, I am Jehovah Sabaoth. That's me. You can trust me. And I want to tell you today, we're living in a world that seems to be out of control. And we need to remember, we have a God who is not out of control. He is in total control. He is Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the Lord of hosts. Tonight you can trust him. We need to remember, we are not alone. We have a God in heaven. Amen. Well, I'm excited. We're going we're gonna to look at some more names. We're going to look at eight, eight more names uh, throughout our study. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. It's been a blessing to me already as I've studied and prepared and, and given them. And I hope it will be a blessing to you as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight that you are our God. We are not dependent on our own wisdom, our own strength, our own uh, friends or family to help us. We need you, and we're thankful you are there and ready for us and, and available for us. 
We thank you for this title, uh, Je Jehovah uh, Sabaoth. Thank you that you are the Lord of hosts, ready to come and fight for us, ready, ready to give us victory over the big challenges of our lives in front of us. I pray for the folks who are watching tonight that they will understand you are enough. We pray now that you would bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week.